last week on The Gathering of Hearts, A Night of Healing with Regina Banks. That's good. She said I had to choose. Going right back to the example, the account in the Bible where Jesus asked him, do you want to be made whole? Mm -hmm. It's a choice. Do you want to get out of grief? Do you want to continue to live your life? And so you've got to choose that I do want to live. I do want to move on. That, and I can do this because God said in his word, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so you've got to make that decision. And I think that's the hard part. Sometimes we don't want to make that decision because it's easier to stay where I am than to do that tough thing and get back up and move on. Hello and welcome to the Gathering of Hearts, A Night of Healing. I am your host, Regina Banks, and I am excited to be here with you. This is the final segment on tonight. I'm excited because I have my friend here, Dr. Andrea Williams, and she's going to share the clinical perspective of how to deal with grief. We've already stated in the first two segments that the holidays are are not easy for everyone, but we want to help you get through it so that you don't stay stuck in a place of depression, so that you don't stay stuck in a place of grief, knowing that God wants to see you smile again. He wants to see you laugh again. And most importantly, your loved ones will want to see you go on with your life. And so I'm going to start out like I did um, on the first segment and the last segment. I just love this poem. I'm not sure who wrote it, but it's just so awesome. And it says, it's okay. It's okay to miss them. It's okay to say their name. It's okay to cry. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to breathe deeply. It's okay to smile when you think of them. It's okay to function. It's okay to have days where you can't function. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be thankful. It's okay to love again. It's okay to remember. It's okay to hope. It's okay to be honest. It's okay to trust again. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So know that it's okay whatever you're feeling, but you have help on tonight. Again, we have Dr. Andrea Williams here, and she's going to give us some points because, you know, back in the day, it was kind of like taboo to actually go and get help to get therapy. But I'm here to tell you that God provides, just like you would go to a doctor if your body parts weren't feeling good. Well, what's wrong with going to a doctor when your emotions aren't feeling good? So, Heartbeat Nation, welcome Dr. Andrea Williams. Hey! Hey! Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm again just excited about this because my heart is always to see people happy. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe that, you know, if you can function in dysfunction, mm -hmm. imagine when there's no longer dysfunction, mm -hmm. when you're just functioning. And so I'm excited about you being here, the pointers that you're going to give, and that people are going to get free. You know, their Absolutely. spirits will be lifted, and they can enjoy the holidays once again. So go ahead and just tell our viewers a little bit about you, about your business, how they can contact you if they need your services. So I'm Dr. Andrea Williams, so you can call me Dr. Andrea, and um, our business is, I'm co-owner of Create Your Life with my business partner, uh, Dr. Shannon Howard. Um, we're located in White Plains, Maryland, or you can find me on Psychology Today, um, just type in Andrea Williams, <laughs> and then you can go from there to uh, uh, get into our um, private practice. Well, we're going to get right into it so you can do what you do. So I want to start off, let's talk about the stages of grief or depression. Okay, great. So I want to start off with a quote too. Okay, so I'm in rhythm with you. Yay! <laughs> so it says, the internal work of grief is a process, a journey. It does not have prescribed dimensions and it does not end on a certain date. So... It's, that's important. Yeah, that's very important, absolutely, because we go through the stages of grief, and uh, Elizabeth Kubler Ross, you know, mm -hmm. had the five stages of grief, and mm -hmm. I'll just quickly go through it: it's denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, and then um, her protege, um, Dr. David Kessler, you know, as a specialist in grief, mm -hmm. and he added meaning, the sixth meaning, right? And there, and it's not linear mm -hmm. at all because you know you can be in depression, you know, which is like the fourth stage, right? And you go back to denial, you know. So wow. it, yeah, so wow. it's not linear at all, and it's all individual, you know, because we all are, you know, um, unique, yeah, you know, unique in our grief. 
So, you know, there are a couple goals for um, the grief process. And one of them is remembering our loved ones uh, with more love yeah. than pain. Mm -hmm. Right? That's you know, good. Exactly. So love exists on the other side, mm -hmm. you know, of the pain. Mm -hmm. You know, once we go through that pain. And the second one is learning how to live fully, you know, in the face of love. So that's good. You know, like I said, you know, before pain is inevitable. If you love, you don't feel pain. Right. right? If you don't want to feel pain, don't love. Right? <laughs> right. You know? So pain is inevitable, but mm -hmm. suffering is an option. I yes. like that. Yeah. Suffering is an option. It's a yeah. choice. Yeah. I love it. It's a choice, it. right? It. You know? So pain is, you know, evidence that we love. Mm -hmm. Right? So grief is not about. Me, it's about we. So we need a community, which I'll go through, you know, okay. uh, soon. So grief is like a river. will take you to your healing where you need to go. Right. And our soul knows how to heal. Mm -hmm. We have to trust that process, that mm -hmm. our soul knows that. So you have to feel those feelings. You know, you got to go through it, you know. If you don't go through it, guess what? It's like, it's, you know, I always say it's kind of lying dormant. Mm -hmm. And then we don't know what triggers going to bring it up, you know. And then even if we're going through it, you know, we may be triggered. And that's mm -hmm. okay. Like that poem you read, um, you know. Um, but I always say this, that yes. when you don't deal with grief, it'll grieve, it'll deal with, with you. you. <laughs> it exactly. will. It's just, exactly. So you want to grieve so that it comes out healthy mm -hmm. and not crooked. Or it mm -hmm. comes out straight and mm -hmm. not crooked. Like mm -hmm. you just said, mm -hmm. you don't know what triggers it. Mm -hmm. So that's when it starts to come out crooked mm -hmm. and you're exactly. out of control. <laughs> exactly. But that's like anything in life. You mm -hmm. know, I always that saying, what you resist persists. That's it's good. just hanging. It's just hanging that's there, good. you know, waiting for the next trigger. And here, here I am. That's you know? good. Exactly. Um, so uh, healing, you know, is healing. Mm -hmm. okay. So love ones, so I want to talk about meaning. You know, which I'll go through the elements of that of grief, the six elements in a few. Okay. And then, um, you know, just creating a legacy because that's what we want to do, right? right? With our right. loved ones to have left behind and what are we going to, you know, put out in the future, you know, right. and bringing them along with us, right? right? You know, we keep them alive. The we keep them alive. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. So, you know, um, loved ones leave behind a legacy. We help shape that legacy. Mm -hmm. And loved one is uh, with me, you know, living life with me. Mm -hmm. Right. Or do we get paralyzed and suffer, you know, because, you know, of the loss that we can't fully live anymore. And I so think that's where a lot of people that. are. They get, and I don't even think they realize that they are. Mm -hmm. You think you're still moving. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like you're uh, existing but not living. Right. If that exactly. makes any sense. Oh, absolutely. You hear those kind of things. Absolutely. So we have to continue the healthy connections with our loved ones, you know, when they die. Mm -hmm. And we didn't stop loving them, and they didn't stop loving us. Right. You know, we have right. to really um, believe that. You know, mm -hmm. um, so we have to learn how to love them in their absence. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. that's kind of beautiful. So I want to go to the six elements in grief. Okay. Okay. So the first one is surround yourself with community. Now you let me know if any of these things resonate with you. You know. Um, so people can support us, right? Mm -hmm. You know, people can distract us, mm -hmm. people can encourage us, whatever we need, right? right? So that's part of that community. Like this. Right, exactly, <laughs> right. This is exactly. support, right? right. right. You know, what do I need from that person, right. you know? We need a lot from you, Dr. Andrew. Oh, <laughs> 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 you know, or someone to listen to us, whatever, mm -hmm. you know? Um, the second one is continued connections, right? That's good. So love never dies. That's good. So we want to say their name, that's right? Good. Share their memories. Yes. Right? Who doesn't do that, right? Yes. Exactly. That's good. Nothing wrong with that. Third, grief does not define you. That's really good. Right? That's really good. Remember what the goal is, is that, to, you know, um, uh, to love the ones who die with more love than pain. That's good. Right? That's so, not for instance, you. like an example of that, some say a widow, well, someone who just lost her husband, it's mm -hmm. like, I don't want to be known as a widow. Well, right. you don't have to. That's, that's good. That's good. define you. What that's do you good. want to be known as? That's good. It's okay. Survivor. Mm -hmm. Overcomer. 
Yeah, so in our own way and at our own pace, mm -hmm. you know, right? You know, create a legacy. Our loved ones would not want us suffering, as you said. Exactly. Right. That's what I always think about, and I've talked about this before, where one of my, or any client mm -hmm. uh, that's grieving and can't seem to get beyond it. Mm -hmm. And I, I always pose that question. I'm like, so, you know, if your grandmother was in the room with you now, or if so-and-so was in the room with you now, and, or they were looking down on you and saw you, do you think they would want to see you like this? Right. And most people are like, oh, my goodness, you know, I hadn't thought about that. Right. That never occurred to them. Yeah. Right? Because grief, it just overtakes you. It takes your, I can remember, I think I shared with you one time, I was sleeping all of the time. So it was like I didn't have time to think because I was asleep mm -hmm. because that was what made it feel better. Right, you know right, I mean? right, exactly. Yeah, part of depression, right? Right, you know, exactly. All the time. Remember, because I told you, I didn't even realize, wow, I was in depression mm -hmm. and didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's a lot of people walking around mm -hmm. not realizing. But I'll let you get to that. <laughs> no, but it didn't, I mean, you know, not want to deal with it. Yeah. Right? Let me go to sleep. I think about it, wake up, it's like, oh, like you said, it's still there. It's right? still there. You don't know where when you right. go to sleep, right? Right. Um, number four, treat yourself as your best friend. I love that. All right. So think about I love that. either your best friend or the kindest person you know, what they would say, mm -hmm. you know, to someone. And then, you know, say that to yourself. That's good. You know, exactly. And also give yourself a direct, um, you know, ask. Right. So let people know how to support you. A lot of times we don't, people don't remember the, the day that someone died or what mm -hmm. have you, but the loved one does. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can say, hey, Regina, you know, my mom, you know, here comes her anniversary mm -hmm. date, you know, or whatever it is I need to ask of you, you know, mm -hmm. it's like how, you know, get people, you know, to support you. You know, have to be alone in this. You know, I guess um, last week, Latonya, she said that, <coughs> that she had to write letters to some people to show them or tell them how to treat her. Because sometimes people are like, oh my God, like it's taboo. Like I don't want to say anything. So she wrote letters to say, hey, I need this from you. I don't need that, but I need this from you. So teach people how to help you. You know, we even talked about with her. I said, because sometimes people say the wrong stuff. They mean well. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, just, you know, go on a trip. Oh, my emotions are going with me on that trip. So, you know, she kind of like, I want to teach people what to say. Like, that's a flag. That's going to set me off. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, you know, have a good day. So that, that's really good. Yeah, that's so really how good. How can I support you? Yes, you know, that's how, good. You know, even David Kessler is like, you know, how is your grief treating you today? You know, Man, that's different. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it's different. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and you know, it's like, in what way can I be of support to you? That, and let that person tell you, because it is hard. We don't know what to do. We don't call people or whatever because mm -hmm. we don't know what to say. Right. You know? And a lot of times people say the wrong thing. Not right. that there's a right or wrong, but you know, we don't know how it impacts. Right. The wrong know. thing for me could be the right thing for exactly. you. And vice versa. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So number five, don't compare. You know, mm -hmm. comparison is tough and grief, right? You know, you look social media. <laughs> oh, yes. this person's doing well, you know, and they mm -hmm. mom died a couple weeks ago and they say, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. No. Don't do that. Don't compare. What people think about your grief is none of your business. <laughs> she said it. <laughs> Go ahead, Donna Andrea. <laughs> you should have gotten over your grief. Who can tell you that? Exactly. Can exactly. You? So be gentle with yourself. Um, be true to yourself and at your own pace. That's good. Yeah. At your own pace. Mm -hmm. Don't exactly. nobody else's race. Yeah, so remember at your that. Own you pace. Know. That's good. Yeah. And number six, count your wins, you know, uh, where growth comes from and where meaning comes out of it. You know, so I got up this morning, took a shower. That's a win. That's you know, a win. I walked in nature. That's a win. That's I went to win. yoga. Anything you do is a win. That's good. Are you getting this on this evening? Count your wins. So don't beat yourself up because, you know, I slept today. But I got up the next day. So that's a success. So right. count your wins. That's very good. And so we're going to be right back. You're going to take a break here. Check out these promos here. We'll be right back. God Wants Me Whole now airs inspirational moments on DC's own 96.3 WHUR all throughout the day every Monday. Tune in and be inspired to be a better you. Hey, it's Regina here, and I want to invite you to join me every 
weekday morning, Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m. for your daily dosage. It's the gathering of hearts and we come together. It's encouraging. It's inspiring. It makes you want to be better. So join me live Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. on Facebook. Can't make it live? Catch the rerun on YouTube or Instagram at God Wants Me Whole. But whatever you do, just join me Monday through Friday. Come on, let's sip coffee. Let's sip tea. Let's drink some orange juice. Let's just have a good time in the Lord. Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. on Facebook Live. See you there. Now we're back, so we're going to let Dr. Andrew just continue again. We just left off with count your wins, and that's so important. You've got to congratulate yourself. you got to like woohoo to yourself Absolutely. with the little. If you just got up from off the bed, off the couch, and walked to the refrigerator, that's a win for you. You know where you've been, so count your wins. They're never too small. Wonderful. Absolutely. So I wanted to talk about, you know, when to seek you know, grief therapy or grief, grief uh, counseling. Yes, that's good um, because a lot of us don't know when, you know, mm -hmm. like, like I said, I never knew I was in depression. <laughs> I should have seeked your help, but I didn't know. So that's good. Exactly. She's going to talk about now when to seek professional help. Absolutely. So research shows that most of us are pretty resilient and we really never need to have therapy or counseling, you know, to um, work through our grief. You right. Know? But then there are those who may not, and, and to be honest with you, I don't, I wouldn't say they're not resilient. Okay. You know? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, reading as a research says that most people are resilient. I'm like, that doesn't mean because people are having difficulties they need to seek counseling that they're not resilient. So right. I'm going to put that, that's my personal view. That's right. <laughs> well, this is your yeah. interview, so we're going with your personal view. <laughs> but rule of thumb, so enduring impairments in functioning, mm -hmm. you know, so like relationship, uh, difficulties at work, Difficulty fulfilling important roles mm -hmm. should be like, you know, the rule of thumb and kind of a red flag for you. Okay. 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 So I'm going to look, at, I'm going to talk about um, addic history of addiction. I'm going to put history of addiction and actually getting stuck in anxiety. Not that they're the same thing, right. but it's the kind of the remedy, you know, or how we treat it right. would be the same. Okay. So, you know, um, you know, you're experiencing intense emotions, right? So that's a trigger for people mm -hmm. with addiction. Mm -hmm. Right, and like I said, getting stuck, you know, um, in your ang or struggling in your anxiety. So you know, you go to develop more healthy coping, you know, those mechanisms. Absolutely, depression and grief. Mm -hmm. Right, you mm -hmm. know, you could speak to that. Right, so guilt, thoughts of death, mm -hmm. you know, worth worthlessness or self loathing, mm -hmm. prolonged and marked functional uh, dysfunction or impairment. Mm -hmm. Right, um, traumatic death and grief. Right. So can lead to intense feelings of helplessness or or fear, mm -hmm. you know, resulting in PTSD or what we get as post traumatic stress disorder. Right. Um, and that would have to be like at least a month. You know, anything okay. less than that is what we we would call acute stress. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So that has to be at least a month. So PTSD would be re experiencing the traumatic event, mm -hmm. you know, avoiding a uh, reminder of the traumatic event uh -huh. or you know, increased arousal okay, okay. so um you know like i said the the main thing that i mean that's the main thing if you find that you're no longer functioning just you know, know. Act, exactly you're not showing up for your life right right that's good that's, that's right. real good yeah. not showing up for your life exactly that's good like i said problems at work problems in relationships yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and important roles and i need to talk to somebody yeah yeah, yeah. exactly and then, of course, I can't emphasize enough, like, thoughts of death, like, suicidal thoughts or right. what have you. you right. Know? It's like, okay, um, you need to talk to someone. You need to be safe. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Um, I want to get to talking about children or adolescents, teens, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we, we're still living through this pandemic, so... Um, we're experiencing loss, but now on the news, we're seeing so much violence, you know, with teens. And so they're back in school. So one day they go to school and their classmate is there. Mm -hmm. And then the next day they come back to school to find mm -hmm. out that their classmate is not. Mm -hmm. And so as adults, you know, we have 
problems dealing with our own grief. Like I shared with you, I was trying to sleep the days away thinking that that was going to make life better. Only, like you said, to wake up and it's still here. So as an adult, you know, we have more experience. So so we think. Um, on how to deal with things. (laughs) We're doing our best. (laughs) Right. So how, as a parent, how would you help a teen or adolescent deal with their feelings? You know, teens don't talk out a lot. You know, they... It's this. The phone is their best friend. You know, so, you know, social media, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So how do you help um, a teen with their feelings when, as an adult, mm-hmm. sometimes we need help with our own? Oh, so, absolutely. you know, absolutely. What would be, how would you help a parent help a, a, a teen, adolescent, with the loss of a friend and how to get through it? Because I'm not sure. It may be a little different because they're younger. I, mm-hmm. I don't know, but mm-hmm. I wanted to pose that question because I'm sure parents are wondering the same thing. How do I help my child? Oh, absolutely. And um, that even before social media, you know, all children, you know, not all children, I know that I did it at 16. Well, it's the age of six and at six lost grandparent children. Okay. So at 16, it really impacted me because at six, I don't really understand right. death, but uh, at 16, it really did impact me. And there was no... Um, devices so right. to speak right? right so you know so it's the same with teens it's all you know it's universal is that we hold our feelings in and what mm-hmm. have you mm-hmm. so one thing i want to say is that there is no right way for teens to mourn the loss of a friend so let's just you know be clear about that just like it's really no right way for anybody it's right? no bad book exactly. pretty much there's no yes. book that says a b c d yeah right like i said you know the stages of grief are not linear <laughs> so um give same respect, trust, and space that adults receive in mm-hmm. grieving in order to process their own feelings in his or her own way. Mm-hmm. Okay, so permission to meet themselves where they are and normalize the frequency of the emotional, you know, changes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, you know, one emotion this day, another one the next, well, not even day, the next hour, the next minute, or what have you, mm-hmm. and it's okay, mm-hmm. you know, because that, and it kind of sounds like, the same things that we as adults go through, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, because they're, um, you know, future adults, <laughs> right? <In> the future. <laughs> uh-huh. um, at some point, the expression of grief through art, you know, writing, talking, will be helpful in therapeutic. Mm-hmm. Okay. But like I said, you know, in their own space and time and at their own pace, right? right? You know. Um, parents need to follow their teens lead, right? So the parents have to be the listener and the learner, right? And the teens, the teacher. Okay. <laughs> the listener and the learner and the teen is the teacher. teacher. I know any teen is watching this. It's like, can that apply all the time? <laughs> That's good, though, because they're teaching uh, us how they actually feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and how to write to help them, you know. Yeah. Exactly. It's like your guest before. It's like, let me write a letter. Mm-hmm. Tell you how. I mean, just because I'm your parent doesn't mean I know, you know, what's going on. Yeah, you know, yeah, all the time. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. how about that? How about that? So, also along with that, um, being a listener and a learner, mm-hmm. provide support of uh, outside resources, mm-hmm. and that kind of sounds like maybe therapy if needed, right? Right. Um, that teen can access when he or she feels the need to, or um, he or she feels uh, ready. Right. You know, it's good. So, also a warning, parents need to be careful of directing their teen's grief process as opposed to being a uh, companion and support, right? Okay. You know, okay. Right. Listener. Mm-hmm. Listener and learner. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> LL. <laughs> right? <laughs> now, also, uh, I want to talk a little bit about constructive behaviors okay. and destructive behaviors. So, um, those that encourage the teen to face their grief. So they definitely need to face that grief. Anybody, right. their child, whatever, they definitely right. need to do that. Um, talking to trusted significant others and mm-hmm. expressing emotions, um, along with maybe creating art and journaling or what have you. Yeah. Right? So all of those things are beneficial, you mm-hmm. know, and therapeutic. It's like you said, in their own time. You know, let them guide you, you know. That's the key, in their own time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's like, oh, you know, they just had this grief. Let's throw them into therapy. Or or, or, don't you want to journal? Don't you want, you know. Yeah. That's a little too much. Yeah. Yeah. Like, back off, mom, dad, you know. (laughs) 
Listen, the, learn. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Listen, learn. I'm the teacher right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, we get kudos today from the teens. They're like, they got in charge. <laughs> <laughs> and then for destructive behaviors, allowing teens to um, numb their feelings, such as, you know, so in other words, don't allow them to um, numb their feelings, such as drugs, alcohol. Reckless uh, sexual behavior, yeah. antisocial behavior, yeah. academic problems, yeah. you know, uh, and the like. Yeah. So, um, for resources for that, um, listen up, parents. Resources coming. Sesame Street in Communities dot org has a lot of resources for uh, younger children. You know, and I think they may have teens. I'm not sure. I was looking on the site because I was looking for like the little kids or what have you. Uh -huh. So it's a lot of different activities that you know uh, parents can do or what have you with their children. So it's Sesame Street and Communities dot org. So very good resource. Mm -hmm. Grief dot com mm -hmm. is another one. Dougie dot org. Dougie. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> D o u g y. Okay. Dot org is a resource for um, all ages, all kids. Okay. Age. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So children, little children, and adolescents. So yeah, yeah. You just choose that, and then the local hospice. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, may have resources or will have resources actually, and groups um, too. I was going to ask you about that group, like group therapy. I'm sure that's helpful too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, so these are, uh, like I said, the resources, you know, um, when you're talking about children. Mm -hmm. And it's, this didn't um, end, you know, a tragedy or anything. One of my young clients, he was 15, okay. I saw yesterday, um, and I hadn't seen him for two months, and he was a little disturbed by some things that happened. They went into shelter in place, uh -huh. um, I want to say last Friday, okay. because a child brought, you know, ammunition a gun with the ammunition in oh, it. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they went locked down for about three hours and that was very traumatic. I'm and sure. two days before that, it's like two two different events happened to him. Two days before that last Wednesday he said that um one in his one of one of his period classes, third period or whatever, he said that uh there was a fight. And his mom characterized it as a brutal fight in okay. the classroom. So I can see how easily these things can turn tragic, yeah. you know, and how teens get here. Yeah. Uh, because when you were talking about that, I was like, oh my gosh, I was just thinking about, you know, a client yesterday, and Matter thankfully it wasn't, you know, tragic. Yeah, yeah. thank God. Yeah, thank exactly, God. because this is would be the very thing that we would be talking about in therapy and, you know, and helping his mom, you know, help him. Wow. Is that it? Uh, yes, as far as um, resources and, you know, as far as helping the teens. And like I said, this probably can apply to the little ones, too. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, age appropriate. You right. Know, of right. 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 Exactly. Well, we thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Because that was some very good information, thank very you. good resources. Again, thank you so much for coming. Oh, like I said, so I know much. you got kudos with the teens. Listen and learn, mom and dad. They are the teacher. <laughs> but, that, but you know, we're making light of it and joking with it. But honestly, that's really good because I know at one point, you know, um, it was like children are to be seen and not heard. Right. And so that's great now that we are allowing them to express their feelings mm -hmm. because a lot of us probably wouldn't be in the situations that we encountered mm -hmm. had we been able to express ourselves, you know? Right. And so I think that's, that, that, that's a very good nugget. You know, I, I just, I always like for kids to express themselves. That's just me. I've always been a talker, but anyway. <laughs> I, I think that's a good thing because you need to know what's going on in the inside right. of them. Other than that, you can't help them. Right. Exactly. So that's, that's, you see, that was my nugget that I took. We're not right? mind readers, right? Exactly. <laughs> right, right, mm -hmm. right. So again, thank you so much. Thank you so, so, much. so much. Um, So Heartbeat Nation, make sure you take note of all of the nuggets that Dr. Andrea just went over. Make sure you apply them to your lives. Make sure, you know, you get out of this state of grief. Again, God does not want you to stay in that place. He wants to see you smile again. He's close to the brokenhearted, and he wants to mend your broken heart. Remember, 
Healing is a choice. You know, surviving is a choice. No longer being a victim, all of that is a choice. And you have to make the choice. It's as simple as this. Give God the fragments, the broken pieces of your heart. Lift it up to him so that he can push it all back together again and that he can give you a new heart. Touch that heart and tell your heart to beat again. For you have so much life left in you. You have victory ahead of you. You have prosperity ahead of you. And you have the good life ahead of you. So we want to get past this. We want this time next year. You're going to still miss your loved ones. But at least this time, you won't go into it with so much grief. Like Dr. Andrew said, you're going to have great memories. It's okay to say their name. It's okay to keep their legacy alive. It's all in a choice. You've got to make sure, make up your mind that I no longer want to be in this place. I no longer want to grieve. I want to be happy again. And so I hope that all three of these segments have helped you. I hope that you have happy holidays. And I hope that your life is starting anew because God says he makes all things new and he will redeem the time for you. Thanks for joining us. I love you guys a bunch. And I will see you Monday morning at uh, 7.30 a.m. for your daily dosage, or you can catch me on Mondays, 96.3 WHUR, giving inspirational moments all throughout the day. I love you guys a bunch. See you next time. Hey, Harpy Nation, it's Regina here, and I'm here to invite you to the Gathering of Hearts Meet and Greet 2021. You know, we've been gathering online virtually, but now we're getting ready to come together in a safe place where we can actually see each other. It's on December 18th, that's a Saturday, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., just $25. It includes your registration and a whole lot of good food and desserts. We're going to have a great time as the Gathering of hearts come together in a safe place. Can't wait to see you there. pandemic, we all found out that we have a lot of gifts and talents, and some of us even started our own businesses. Well, if that's you, do you need a logo, maybe a banner, a flyer, video production? If you do, I want you to try Wheel Works. 